Greetings, church family. Uh, This week in our reading challenge, as we make our way through the Gospel of Luke, we encounter an interesting encounter in the temple that Jesus has in chapter 19. I want to read just a few verses and make some comments and application in light of those. Uh, Chapter 19, verses 45 and 46. And he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. So Jesus sees people selling goods in the temple court and draws from two Old Testament passages in his response. First from Isaiah 56, verse 7. That's the reference to a house of prayer. And then also Jeremiah 7, verse 11, which is the den of robbers reference. What is the significance of Jesus' use of the Old Testament here? And what is the practical relevance of his response for us at SAPC? Well, first of all, in Jeremiah, I'm going to take them in different order. I'm going to address Jeremiah first. In Jeremiah 7, we have Jeremiah's temple sermon. Uh, It's often referred to as he speaks to the people of Judah of his day, denouncing temple worshipers for their idolatry and for not listening to God's word to them. In fact, they were even presuming upon God and the temple structure itself, thinking that as long as they had the temple in place and they carried out certain ceremonies associated with it, they would be safe and blessed, regardless of how they were living. Uh, I call this the rabbit's foot approach to God, thinking that uh, he is sort of uh, a lucky charm of sorts where as long as we have certain things associated with him in our presence, then he will automatically bless us regardless of what's going on in our lives. Second, in Isaiah 56, we have a snapshot of the coming age of fulfillment in the light of the Messiah's work one that includes foreigners and the nations being gathered uh, to worship the true God. And in particular, in that context, God speaks of drawing worshipers into his holy presence and making them joyful in his house of prayer. So what do these texts, through Jesus' use of them in Luke 19, uh, how do they apply to us today? Well, Jesus is applying these texts to worship at the temple in his day, the money changers situation. And scholars have noted that the corruption present during this time in worship at the temple uh, was prevalent. Corruption among the priests and among the sellers of the goods in order to make a profit. Making a profit when it comes to worship. So they struggled with the same sins highlighted in these Old Testament texts. Sins of idolatry, presumption, and hypocrisy. Don't we struggle with those same sins when it comes to worship? Going through the motions while our hearts drift away from the Lord? Are we truly listening and obeying His word to us? And what about the rabbit's foot idea? Do we think that we are good with God and he will bless us as a church because we're carrying out certain ceremonies or we're involved in so many busy activities at the church rather than depending upon him and Christ alone? And more positively, in terms of application, in light of Isaiah 56, God's temple or dwelling place with his people, now in Christ by the Spirit, is to be characterized by a house of prayer, being a house of prayer for all nations. Does that characterize us at St. Andrews as a whole? Yes, we readily affirm our belief in the power of prayer, but do we actually pray in a way that matches such a profession? 
This week, let us examine our hearts in light of these things and keep reading. God bless.